Okay, welcome to section two of structures and forces. We're going to look at external and internal forces that act on structures. So uh, we're going to consider types of loads, uh, types of forces, and the, the variables are the things that will affect what a force can do to a structure, I guess is one way to put it. Um, first of all, a force. A force is simply, um, let me just grab a color here. A force is simply just a push or a pull in any direction um, and this push or pull is applied to any structure sometimes it will cause it to move sometimes just changes its position or shape sometimes it doesn't do anything right uh, but it doesn't mean that it's it's still not a force right uh, anyways it's a push or a pull any direction can cause movement can stop movement can do all sorts of things uh, first thing we're going to uh, look at here is we're going to consider these three variables right here. We're going to look at magnitude, location, and direction, and, and how those three things, uh, first of all, affect uh, how a, a structure moves when it's, a, when it's uh, been influenced by a force. First of all, magnitude, this big word here, it simply means the size or the strength of a force. This one's pretty easy. This is, uh, you know, if you're, i got to be careful what I say here. Um, um, if you are playing baseball and uh, you swing at the ball as it's pitched to you and you swing really hard, that ball is going to go very far. It, you hit it. I, we're assuming you're going to hit it. That ball will go very far. Okay? That would be an example of a large magnitude, a great force, you applying force to that ball by swinging hard. Um, another pitch could come your way, and if you just if you bunted it, right? You just put the bat right in front and, and made contact with the ball. The ball would still move, but it wouldn't move very far okay, in comparison. That would be an example of a small magnitude. Okay? So depending on the size of the force, it can cause a structure to move a great deal um, or not very much at all. Okay? So that's magnitude. This next one, I'm going to show you a couple pictures here. This is location. This is where on the structure the force is applied. So um, let's just say, let's say you are, uh, you want to move a refrigerator. Okay, there's a old style refrigerator, and um, you're a little frustrated, so you take a uh, a run at it, and you jump in the air, and you try to move the. And you come flying through the air, and you hit the fridge right there. It's probably going to move. Which direction will it move, or how will that refrigerator move if you apply your force to that place on the structure, on this refrigerator? You bet. It's going to move kind of like that. It's going to fall forward, right? Okay. So next shot you try you try something different okay this time you come take a run at it and you fly as hard as you can and you hit the hit the refrigerator right there this time okay right in that spot okay maybe you're applying the same amount of force but you hit the fridge in that position and which way will the fridge fall or i should say move it's going to fall this way and it's going to crush you well, that's a big mistake, right? Now, next time you do it, you learn from your previous two tries, and you take a flying leap again, and maybe you you hit the fridge right kind of in the middle. And which way will this fridge probably move? In this case, it's going to move probably straight ahead. It's not going to tip over one direction or another. Okay. So this is all um, this is all uh, location of the force. So in all three of these examples, um, you're applying the force to a different place on the structure, and depending on the location uh, that the force is applied to, it's going to cause the structure to move differently. Okay. So that's the example for that one. Um, the next one that we're going to look at is uh, direction and that's what angle the force is actually coming from 
So let's go back to that page again. Let's get rid of some of our stuff here. We don't need this. Oops. Now, um, uh, let's, sure, we'll use a fridge again. It's there. May as well use it. Now, what if um, a very large force, I don't even know what it is, okay, comes from uh, this direction, okay? Very large force, large force. In other words, a very large magnitude, right? So if it comes from this area, from this direction, and hits the, the fridge in this spot, this fridge may move this way, okay? If we have a large force and it comes from a different direction, right, a different angle, hits it in the same place, but from a different angle, it's going to move differently, okay? Likewise, and uh, if it comes from the back, shoot, right, and hits it in the back, but in the same location, it might fall forward. So in, in all these cases, we're hitting the, the, this object, the refrigerator, in the same location, but they're all coming from different directions. So applying a force from a different angle or from a different direction is also going to cause an object to move differently. Okay. So that's these three right here. Um, magnitude, location, and direction will affect how a force is influenced. So that's something that you might want to go over uh, a couple of times. Okay. Um, now from here, I'm just going to quickly go over a couple of things here. You can refer back to this. Um, the SI unit. SI unit, um, this is the metric system. Uh, this, the units that we use to measure force, and you're going you're gonna to see this a lot in your math and, well, mostly science career, actually. Um, the, the unit that we use are Newtons, and the abbreviation is a, a capital N. Now, um, Newtons, uh, that's actually very influenced by, f by gravity. Um, let, I want us to take a, take a look at these, uh, these two terms here, mass, oops, mass and weight. Okay. Mass measures the amount of matter in an object. Weight is actually a measure of the amount of gravitational pull or force on an object. Okay, so weight is about gravity. Mass is about actual matter. Okay. Now, we use mass and weight pretty much interchangeably because for the most part, we're always on Earth where the gravity is always the same and it's, it's you know, relatively constant. Um, the question that I always pose in class is, if we ship you to the moon, what changes your mass or your weight? Well, your weight changes because on the moon there's uh, one sixth of the amount of gravity that there is on the Earth. Okay, so there's less gravitational pull, therefore your weight would be different. Your mass, which is the amount of matter in an object, doesn't change. You're still the same person. Okay, considering you didn't eat much on the flight. Okay, so um, anytime we are uh, measuring the gravitational pull, that's force, the actual unit, nobody ever uses this, but the actual unit, like I said, is Newtons. Now, um, here's where I'm going to do a little, uh, a little demo, not a demo, a little um, um, example of how you convert, because we live in Canada, but we hear pounds all the time, right? But we actually, we actually weigh things. Um, calculate the weight of things in uh, kilograms or grams. So I'm going to show you the, the process for changing this. All, all, the, um, all the information that you need in order to figure this out is right here, right, and right there. But I'm going to do an example for you. I weigh, let me get a different color again, I weigh 180 pounds, 180 pounds. Now I want to get my, my weight in newtons. So this is the, probably the most important calculation. To go from pounds to kilograms, I would divide by 2.2. Okay, and if I divide by 2.2, that gives me, here, let me give you an, an actual accurate uh, measurement here. I should know this, shouldn't I? Divided by 2.2 gives you 
right. Um, 81.8 kilograms. Okay. Um, that's kilograms. We want newtons. And it says here there are 10 newtons in every kilogram. So that means we're going to take our um, kilograms, multiply by 10, and that gives us 880, sorry, 818 newtons. Oh, boy, I feel fat. 818 newtons. Okay. And that's taking into consideration, that's a measure of gravitational pull. The, the, uh, the force of gravity on me makes me weigh 818 newtons. Okay. I think I'm going to color good there.